Afra Ben was one of the first women to make her living as a writer. She was highly respected in her field, as her work often pushed boundaries for this time period. Both her narrative works and her poetry approach topics such as love, sexuality, homoeroticism, and contemporary political events. The work, Poems Upon Several Occasions, is broken up into multiple sections, majority of which was written by Mrs. Ben, but some parts were written about her by other authors. This work gives us insight on how sexuality and love were thought about in the 1600s by the majority, and also how these thoughts were protested by some. The Wilson Library copy of this work also gives us insight on how Afra Ben's work was valued. A unique book plate found on the inside cover displays how this work was handled and circulated in later years. Afra Ben began her career in writing after two major events in her life. First was the death of her husband in 1665, and second was her bout in debtor's prison. Her career prior to writing was as a spy for King Charles II. This is also how she landed herself in prison after not being able to pay him back for her trip home after a mission. Once she was released, she struggled to financially support herself for a while. Not too long, though, as her first play was produced, and then she vowed to never depend on another person for financial assistance again. This was the turning moment of her career. After this is when she started focusing wholeheartedly on her literature, and we got many of the works that are featured in this book. Ben made multiple significant contributions to the literature world during her career. Her voice had an effect on women of her time period and still has one on women today. There is a quote of Virginia Woolf's that describes the significance of Mrs. Ben's work for women. All women together ought to let flowers fall upon the tomb of Afra Ben, for it was she who earned them the right to speak their minds. It is she, shady and amorous as she was, who makes it not quite fantastic to say to you tonight, earn five hundred a year by your wits. Afra Ben's work pushed boundaries by being more expressive and personal than anything else that was written at the time. Her distinctive poetic voice was characterized by her topics as well. Her work often referenced and examined contemporary events, female sexuality, and love. One example of her provocative poetry is The Willing Mistress which is included in poems upon several occasions. This poem is narrated by a mistress and discusses interacting with her lover. The poem begins with the mistress describing the setting of one rendezvous and continues to say, A many kisses he did give, and I returned the same, which made me willing to receive that which I dare not name. The poem continues the provocative tone and ends with the lines, he did but kiss and clasp me round, while those his thoughts expressed, and laid me gently on the ground. Ah, who can guess the rest? Not all of her work was of a sexual nature. Much of it was addressed to specific people, as Mrs. Ben also used her poetry to address personal issues and to describe friendships. Not only is the audience normally specified in her work, but so is the speaker. This particular style of poetry gives a sense of directness and immediacy. Many of the poems in this book were in that specific style and were to or about women that she had bonded with. Women that were uniting, usually to oppose male lovers, was another theme of her work. Much of the advice regarding this subject and poems upon several occasions can still be used today as love and heartbreak are topics that transcend a certain time period. The first section of this book included 45 poems written by Mrs. Ben. The sex second section included about 10 more short writings and poems written about her by both her peers and other authors. She was praised by her literary peers and was even nicknamed the Incomparable Astrea, which was based on the code name she had used when she was a spy. She often used this name in her writing as well. Her reputation was so impressive that she was often, often proclaimed as a successor to the great Greek poet Sappho. Moving on to the condition of the item, you can tell that this work was highly valued. The outer edges of the pages are of one of gilt, but of a gleaming red color instead of being completely gold. Though it was published in 1684, the item is still in very good condition. 
The pages are almost in perfect condition, as is the cover, minus one small area of fray. There are a few marks from liquid, as well as a few small holes that look similar to burn marks throughout the book, but that is the only visible wear and tear of the item. There was also a short blue bookmark, made out of a ribbon, connected to the outer edges, and based on its torn state, one can assume that it had been used quite a lot. This would imply that the book was quite popular in its time. On the inside of the front cover is where we find the story of this item beginning to unravel. There is a large book plate in the middle of the cover that gives us insight of both who the owner was and how this book was used. The book plate pictures the Braithwaite family crest, along with a ribbon reading Semper Fidelis. Underneath those prints is the signature of Joseph Braithwaite. Joseph was a New Zealand politician and a bookseller. He opened Braithwaite's Circulating Library in 1863. It began as a very small bookstore, but as Mr. Braithwaite's popularity grew because of his political career as a mayor, so did the popularity of the store, and it eventually expanded and became Braithwaite's Book Arcade. We can tell from the differences in date that the Mr. Braithwaite got his hands on this book many years after it was originally published in England. Though it is not clear if this book was perhaps first a personal one of Mr. Braithwaite's, it is likely that it ended up in his store at some point. So this copy of Poems Upon Several Occasions has been passed around and read by a very diverse group of people. The fact that Braithwaite was so interested in Mrs. Ben's work many years later shows her reputation for producing valuable literary works. Knowing that the book was circulated throughout the New Zealand public, we are given some insight on the usage of this item and why, is it in, why it is in good condition, yet still has some visible wear. Anything that is available and lent to the public is likely to experience some damage. This would explain the spots from liquid being spilled and also the burn marks that perhaps were from smoking. Continue a few pages and the title page tells us that the item was published in 1684 by J. and R. Tonson. Both Jacob and Richard Tonson, who were brothers, were very well known in the publishing world in the late 1600s, and they often teamed up together for work. When Ben was chastised over her often vulgar writing, these brothers were among the few that actually celebrated her work instead. Had it not been for their support, much of her work may have gone unpublished and therefore unseen by us today. Her connection to these brothers began through her friendship with another notable writer of the time, John Dryden. His effect on Mrs. Ben is noticeable through her work, as they were both writers of independent mind that felt very strongly about their opinions and expressed them in a very natural tone. Using both knowledge of the author, Afro Ben, and the physical characteristics of the item, we can learn a lot about the way in which it was used and valued. Mrs. Ben was a revolutionary for women in the literature world and many female writers have named her work as an influence for their own writings. Her unique poetry approached topics that were previously taboo to talk about in a public setting, especially for a woman. Among them were discussions on female sexuality, love, the Whig party of her time, and other controversial political and societal events. The copy at Wilson Library gives us insight on how the book was used in a broader, more literal sense. The publishing information listed provides us with some important historical details that connect Mrs. Ben to other intellectuals of her time. The book plate is perhaps the most remarkable part of the item, however. It gives us knowledge on when, where, and how the book was circulated, as well as telling us the owner. Poems Upon Several Occasions was a work that was valued and respected in its time, and still is today. That is evident through the ways in which it has been handled. The book was separated into two different sections, which gives us a detailed insight on both Mrs. Ben's unique poetic voice and also a glimpse into how she was viewed by her peers. It is likely this, this work will continue to be treasured and be used to learn about the history of women in literature, about how sexuality was approached in the 1600s, and about Afro Ben's significance as a female writer.